Hello everybody and welcome back to Illuminated Minds YouTube channel. My name is Hyrule Samson and as you know we have been talking about the element of prose or the element of novel and we will discuss a lot of things but today we are going to talk about themes and diction. Now I would like to start with themes. You need to understand that over the time I have discovered that students are actually mixing two different things together. Mixing morals themes and subject matter together now if you have not watched the video that addressed subject matter i want to go and watch it because i have discussed about it earlier now today we are going to talk about themes and like i said theme is different from morals morals is what the writer is trying to impose on you to make you understand that okay this is the right thing that the society expects of you that is moral the writer is make, trying to make you understand. That's why you can understand the morals or the cultural belief or expectation of a particular society, even though you have not been there, but you can decode those things through the writer's creative writing. Now, theme. Theme is like a bigger picture. It shows what the writer is trying to discuss in his book. It does not give resolution. It does not talk about morals. It does not talk about any other thing. It's just like a bigger picture that addresses what the writer is trying to pass across to you. That, in simple terms, is themes. Now, we can have different themes in a work of art, in a novel. We can have different kind of themes. For example, if you are to talk about a feminist novel, for example, now, we are going to be talking about the struggles of women. We are going to be talking about gender oppression and you know stuff like that now if you want to talk about themes you begin to bring out the problem that the book or the novel actually addresses that is the novel that is a theme rather the problem it addresses it does not have anything to do with resolution it does not have anything to do with the morals or any other thing in that particular work of art do you understand what i'm saying you can have as many themes as possible in the work of art but like I said earlier about subject matter, subject matter can only be one, that is the moral that the writer is trying to pass across. Please, I will recommend you watch that part so that you will not miss out and you don't mix the two together. Now, like I said, theme, there can be different themes depending on the number of problems or the number of ideas that the writer or the author of that particular novel is trying to pass across to you. We can have themes in drama, we can have themes in poetry, we can have theme in novel we can have theme in short stories we can have theme in almost all work of art that i can think about for now unless there's anyone that doesn't have to do with writing but that if it has to do with writing then definitely there must be theme because you must definitely discuss about the problem before talking about the resolution right now i said next we are going to talk about is diction now what does diction means diction is the writer's choice of words and also it is not just the writer's choice of words <clears throat> it also has to do with how the writer put his words together for example let us look at two profound writers in africa wale shoinka and chino achebe now if you read the works of wale shoinka you will discover that he used figurative words he does not just speak straight but if you read the works of jp clark or Chino Achebe, they speak in fluent language, as in, in direct language. They speak in a more simple term that if you read it, you don't need anybody to explain it in, a, in an extravagant manner to you before you understand them. But if you read most of Wale Shoyika's book, it will use progressive language that you have to think before actually understanding what is trying to pass across to you, right? That is exactly what I'm saying. And I've always been using a poem on this YouTube channel. I don't know if you have read it. The J.P. Clark's Abiku and the Wallace Shewika's Abiku. If you read the two, you will discover that one is written in simple language while the other is written in figurative language. That is for the J.P. Clark, it's written in just simple term. And one of Wallace Shewika is written in figurative terms. That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, if I want to speak, I can decide to speak grammar that people necessarily may not understand what i'm saying but you know communication only happens when i'm able to speak and you understand right now you can still understand when i begin to speak big big grammars i mean big big words but it may take time or some people may not even understand why because those words were not direct and they are not in simple sentences or they are not easily decoded yes yeah, so that is about um diction yes yeah, so i wanted to subscribe to this youtube channel if You've learned something from this video. So I wanted to check other videos I've made on the element of prose or novel. And it's so wonderful. So this will be the end of the episode that addresses the element of prose.
picture and in the next video i'll see you before that time i want you to subscribe to this youtube channel share the video to other people and i will bring to you more interesting and educative content my name is irene samson once again coming to you from illuminated minds youtube channel bye